Hey there, Miss. Blah, 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 blah. Hey there, Soul Shines. It's Michelle here. And today it's a make with me. I don't have pictures of Mary's progress. I'm sorry. Um, it is what it is. Before we move on to showing you guys my progress, I'm inviting you guys to hook that subscribe button, knit the like button, and leave some yarn in the comments. All right. Um, oh, yes. And before I get going, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, we're having a yarn party online. It's like a Zoom kind of thing. It's not hosted by Zoom. The company but it's video chat uh, if you want the link send me an email I will send it to you if you are interested in yarn parties but you're like that time doesn't work for me send me an email as well with uh, two or three times that work for you and I might move the yarn party or do a second yarn party because I love would love to um, chat with you also while I'm on it I have a Kofi subscription that you guys can check out, also linked below. Um, and if you're interested, you can look at the link tree down below. It has a list of uh, different links that you can go follow and see if any of them interest you. I'm thinking of opening a Patreon, which is similar to Kofi. There's some differences. I actually end up with more money from Kofi than Patreon because of how Patreon works. They take a fee. Kofi doesn't. The only fees is whatever processing fees happen. So I like Kofi. Um, I think that covers all the like, you know, non yarny stuff. So I have my fancy project bag and the blanket got big guys. And it's only about halfway done. So as a reminder for the end, in case any of y'all are new, it's probably five feet wide, 60 inches, I would say. Maybe a little less by the time it's got the border on. I don't know, that's when I'll finally measure it to know what it is. But I'm going by my uh, wingspan, guessing. So I've got the orange section, that's the first section you do, fun little triangles. And then this section here, which is kind of bullseye-like. And then the flying saucers. And then the one my son says looks like a QR code, the green there. It was really fun to do the green. I like the green. Um, the blue and the purple. And then this is how far I am in the next blue section. So that's kind of fun. And if you look at it this way, it looks like it's got the letter G. And those are really fun. It also looks like Y's here, right here. Uh, I guess right now it looks more like a V, but it's been really fun to see what letters I see throughout the thing, but um, when it's like this, I didn't even realize there were G's, um, but when I turn it and when I'm working across it, because I work this way, I see the G's. Um, if you don't know, overlay mosaic crochet, you start at one end, you go across, you tie off your end. So you end up with ends on both sides, just tons and tons of ends. You could leave them and have an aesthetic choice of fringe on the side, which I think could look cute on some things. Or there's an envelope border. I've never done an envelope border before. We will find out how that goes when this is to that point because that's what I will be using. Oh, in case you wanted to look at the back. Here's what the back is looking like. I really like the blue section. It's kind of fun. Um, there is a technique that Juniper and Oaks just taught, like beginning of this month, last month, I'm not sure when, on how to do reversible um, overlay mosaic crochet. So that's really fun and exciting. Uh, I was way far into this to practice it with this, but it's kind of fun. I kind of like the way the back looks. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say. I, I will have the pattern down below, and 
um, this is this is what we've got so far if you go sideways doo -doo -doo. see it's gotten to the point where it's like bigger than ooh, 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 so big um yeah so that's that's my overlay mosaic crochet blanket I'm giving it to a friend so I keep working on it I have done better on this blanket than I've done in blankets all the past the only other blankets that I've ever really gotten to go anywhere were a couple of corner to corner blankets that I did for grandkids blankets have not really been my thing but I'm actually really enjoying this however because it's crochet and my arm gets tired with crochet I do about two rows and I'm done I started out doing like seven or eight rows and then I went down to three rows now I'm like two rows you can do two rows that's that's kind of my goal and there's been days where it's like I can do one row today so it is definitely slowed down but it's okay I do hope to get this finished soon, but you know, when the arm gets tired, the hand gets tired, that's all there is. So let's talk about now the 10 gram challenge. Shannon was talking, Shannon of Another Yarn, she's awesome. If you haven't already followed her, please do. You probably have because she's great. But uh, the she gave herself a 10 gram challenge, kind of talked about it and like, we should do a challenge. She wants to finish a sweater in a couple of months versus like the eight or nine months that it took her to do the last sweater, you know, almost a full baby. Uh, and she's using finger weight, fingering weight yarn and she is pushing herself to do it. And so I was like, I'm going to do it. I want to make a sweater. Let's do the 10 gram challenge. So I, I tried. I did. I am working on my granddaughter's cardigan. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to see how much 10 grams of this stuff. This stuff is um, Karen Simply Soft Marled. So it's a four weight. This feels slightly heavier than regular Karen simply soft, but it's probably not. I don't know. I've never um, Compared there's 141 grams of yarn in one skein And I work My three front my three body panels at the same time. So I've got the back and then I've got the two sides and um, I just work across, work across, drop that yarn, pick up this yarn, work across, drop it, pick a, you know, work across it, and um, do my three panels. And I found out that I go across and back and across, and that's 10 grams. I try, I, my goal is to at least do that a day, but I try to do four. It does go a little bit slower because I don't know how well you can tell online, but there are cables. It's got, it, um, the back has some two by two ribbing. Um, it's got a cable that's worked over eight stitches here, a couple pearls and these twist things couple of pearls and then a cable worked over 16 stitches couple of pearls a twist couple of pearls eight stitches pearls twist pearls 16 switches stitches pearls twist pearl eight stitches and then finishes with a two by two ribbing on this side we've got and these are pretty much mirrored of each other so you've got your two by two ribbing your eight stitch pearl twist pearl 16 stitches pearl twist pearl and then you've got a seed stitch where you put um oh oh what was like what happened to it this stitch marker is red so it blends in but these are my stitch markers that i mark here's where a button will go here's where a button will go here's where a button will go and um, 
I on this side it's the buttonholes so there's three buttonholes now and um, I just work my buttonhole and then add my uh, stitch marker to that row so that I know where and I put the buttonhole button on these it will be perfect so um, yeah it is a free pattern uh, I think from your inspirations or something like that um, so I will link it and of course it would look better because of all of the cables it would look better in a solid yarn but I had received this yarn from um, a mystery yarn challenge I thought it would be really fun to make my granddaughter a cardigan in it and the pattern I found was the cable one and it's okay but because it's cable, even though I'm only doing three to four rows a day, the cables take a little bit longer. Even going across the back, you knit the knits and purl the pearls, but you gotta kinda watch, is this a knit or is this a pearl? So the back's a little bit easier, but it's still you're switching back and forth instead of just straight stocking out, which goes way fast, so. It's fun though, I'm enjoying it. I actually really like doing cables pretty pretty nice so there you go though that's I'm doing 10 grams or four rows depending on the day three or four rows now the sweater I wanted to do 10 grams on it had one heck of a beginning um, I had just so you know the yarn I'm using is soft be soft and sleek DK um, low pill fiber it's 100% acrylic and this has 114 grams per ball and you know this is a light three it says it's a three it almost feels like a two and, and um, it's also a lighter weight yarn just in general like sometimes if you have two yarns side by side and they're both the same yarn weight one's still going to be heavier than the other because of the fiber and how it's spun and all these things well this one like this acrylic here um for the red cardigan it feels heavier even than some of the other acrylics that are the same weight it just has a heavier feel to it um whereas this one feels lighter I had a pattern I wanted to do. I bought the pattern, so I better find some better yarn. Because I restarted that 40 billion times. Like, at least eight, I think. I don't know. I started it and had mistakes, and I was having the hardest time. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to find another pattern. So I found another pattern, which is a drops pattern, so it's free. That's the one that will get linked below. And I was like, okay. I learned some things from doing that, but I scratched that. I went back to the original pattern and it was working out for a minute. Um, and then my um, stitch marker, it was one of those like people made it kind with the charms and stuff. So it's like jewelry making. Well, it caught the yarn and pulled this big loop out and I couldn't figure out how to slip it, fix it. So I actually decided I'm just done. I can't start over again. I don't know how to fix this. I am just done with this pattern. The other thing is because the yarn is so dark, it was not showing the um, little leaves. I had picked up one that had leaves in the yoke. It wasn't showing that. So I want to get a lighter weight um, or lighter colored yarn that will just really um, show those definitions and make that yarn shine. Uh, so I'll probably see if I can find an alpaca for that because I really want an alpaca sweater but anyway um, after much stress I deleted that project I said nope I will find new yarn and do this and then I started again with the drops pattern that I chose and so far so good I have not done 10 grams yet I seem to be averaging seven grams a day and that's okay my goal 
for myself, the challenge I've given myself is to do at least five. Try to push it as close to nine as you can go, or 10 as you can go. Um, it's kind of turned into a seven ground challenge because that's about where I'm like, I just can't do anymore either because I'm going to sleep, it's late at night or whatever. Um, so yeah, so do you guys wanna see it? Ta-da! This is where I'm at. I've got, um, I did my last, okay. So you do your ribbing. It's a um, two by two ribbing here at the top. And as you can see, this, the definition just doesn't show in this yarn. That's part of why I switched patterns. I do have two different yarn balls going. Um, I'm being very careful right here at this back edge to um, switch yarns without pulling too tight or being too loose. I have some areas that are a little better than others as far as the tension goes, but it is fine. It is great. Um, I did that because I have two different uh, dye lots and I just figured it would kind of help blend them. Although I have to admit, as far as I know, I could be using the same two dye lots in this first, first section because yarn balls lost their things and I ended up with three in my bag and I'm not sure which yarns are which, but I'll just go with it. It's gonna be whatever it's gonna be. Um, and then you do an increase like right after you do this, you do an increase row that increases a lot. And then you work down to right here, there's these little, they're actually little hole spots. Um, and it's just, you do a yarn, you do a stitch, yarn over stitch all in the same spot. And you do them every, like this far apart on this size. There's different sizes, this size, it's like this. Um, and that's your increase. And then you do your stockinette for a little while till you get down to the next size it tells you and you do another increase row and then you'd get down. And I just did my last increase row for the yoke. Um, I also, as soon as you got done doing the two rows that make up this increase pattern, um, there is a row that, oh, I'm gonna sneeze. As soon as you get done with that, there's this row that um, you either, depending on the size, you either do one or two increases or one or two decreases, although I think there's one size or two sizes that you don't do anything on. I had to do a decrease, and so I'm on that row. I did my decrease, I only had one decrease to do. And then I'm working my way around. At this point, there are 366 stitches around on my needle. And I haven't worked on it yet today. So I will do my, um, my yoke until I get to the point where I put on this, or separate out for sleeves. So I have maybe two and a half, three inches more to go. And then I will be putting it out for our separating out the sleeves. Ah! I'm really excited about it. So this was fun. Um, I have no clue what size needles because I don't speak sizes. I speak um, millimeters as far as knitting needles go. I think these are four millimeter needles. They could be four or five or 4.5, but I think they're four. So I just really enjoy that. I like, um, I love how the yarn has a little bit of color variation. So it gives it some interest without a lot of work. And I'm excited. And maybe, maybe one of these days I'll get 10 grams on it or not. But yeah, for the next little while, I will have a few rows of 366 stitches around and then I will separate out for sleeves. I don't know how many stitches I'll have after that. I'm sure it'll still be over 300, well over 300. Um, probably close to 350 maybe? I don't know. I haven't looked that far ahead in the pattern. Um, and then I will work down. Now, 
I may do something different to the pattern, but that's where the try-on cables will come in handy. And because, um, you'll, I'll do the yoke here. I'll probably, when it gets down to where it tells me to put the yoke on, I actually probably will put it on try-on needles to see if the yoke is um, actually a good size for me. Um, and then because I am a pear shape or bell shape, um, I've always been a pear shaped body. Just as I got more weight, it got even more pear shaped. But because of that, I think I wanna put it on and make sure that it's not gonna stretch around my hips, but actually give, so I might have to do some increases lower just to kind of um, make it. And I think that's a really fun thing. Whether you're sewing, crocheting, knitting, if you know what you're doing, you can adjust things. Um, if I were to make myself a dress, I would probably have to have, I know I would, I've always had to do this. I've had to have one size for the top and another size for the hip. I've always had a hard time buying dresses because my proportions and stuff um, it was a little easier to buy them when I was a size six than it is now, but I always had a smaller size on top than on the bottom, and now it's like even worse. But because I know how to read patterns and I've been sewing, crocheting my for as long as I can remember, like I, my grandma taught me to crochet, I was probably seven, eight years old, maybe, I don't even know. Um, I know before fourth grade and my I learned to sew when I was eight so those are th skills that I have for sure knitting has been more recent years and I love knitting but even my crochet skills has transferred over to knitting skills it's like okay I understand how this works I think sewing skills even comes because like some people are like I don't understand why a sweater is doing this but if you've been sewing you know that a sewing pattern goes like this um, because it and it's smaller in the front than the back because it's making adjustments for all your body and so you can bring some of that knowledge cross uh, craft things and so I know that I'm probably going to add some increases around my waist I know that I want my sweater to be a little longer but I may put, what I may end up doing is getting this down a ways and then um, kind of putting the body on hold and doing the sleeves and then come back and finish the body. That way I know I have enough yarn to do whatever I'm doing for the sleeves. I don't know if I'm doing short sleeves, if I'm doing three quarter sleeves. I don't think I'm doing long sleeves. And I can't remember what the patterns. I think the pattern, is the pattern short sleeved or three quarters? I'm gonna go look at the pattern really quick. Cause I can. Yeah, she's got short sleeves on. That's probably what I will do um, is do short sleeves, but I wanna get the sleeves done and then I can just keep going until I'm done with yarn and or until I'm like, yep, that's long enough. Cause I do like my things to come long. That whole crop thing, I'm like, not for me. I think it looks super cute on a lot of people. My body doesn't lean to that. My body kind of leans into uh, flowy like a river. And that means that like drop waists and um, yeah. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. I'm excited about it. This is really fun. I, Loved, I love, I have a rose colored sweater. Um, I will put a picture up just so you guys can remember that I really enjoy wearing that I made. I made that one um, with worsted weight and I did worsted weight for my first sweater because it was my first sweater. I um, used 100% cotton. I'm not a fan of using acrylic, but I think this will be okay. Um, I wish I could use wool, guys. 
there's so much so many gorgeous wools out there I wish I could use wool <sighs> sadness anyway I need to go so I can say goodbye to my daughter before she runs out the door to school remember to let your light shine through your creations whatever they be and I'll see you guys next time bye